G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, you would have seen uh, in my early videos that I've got a, a stick welder that I use. It's uh, this one here. It's Peerless 160 amp. It's just a basic stick welder. I bought it second hand, $35. High, it's got high and low output. It's a really good welder, good unit. I've got some big, long uh, 400 amp. Uh, cables on it that I bought oh, somewhere else. Anyway, I've had numerous welders over the years and I've got one at the moment which is another peerless I picked up really cheap and I've got it pulled apart, well I've got the top off and I'm just lubricating the uh, the choke in it because that was a bit, a little bit sticky. So while I got it apart I thought well I'll show you if you're interested what's inside of a basic stick welder like this. Now they all basically work on the same principle. All they are is a, a basic transformer that just steps the voltage from 240 down to 50 or 60 or whatever the, the, the volts will be. And of course, when you lower the volts, you raise the amps and uh, that's how you get the, the arcing capability. Anyway, uh, we'll have a look at the one that's um, opened up. It's the same sort of setup as this, very similar and uh, we'll, uh, we'll look inside of it and you can see what actually is inside of a of an old second-hand arc welder. So here we have a variable choke welder. Now there's two sorts of welders, there's variable choke and there's fixed. Now the fixed ones basically have the same sort of setup, they've got a, a metal cord transformer with a bunch of coils which change the, the voltage amperage uh, ratio. On a, on a fixed, non-adjustable welder, they just tap into various points on the, the coils and basically you can then only use those fixed amperage settings for the job. So there might be two or maybe even three tap-off points which will basically um, determine the amps that you're going to use. So you might have a low and a high or maybe a low, a middle and a high. So that's the basic welder. But on this sort of welder which is variable choke, it's just basically another step up but all they do is in the middle of the metal core which makes up the majority of the transformer there's an airspace and there's a block of steel which can go in and plug the airspace or you can pull it out and put an air, ca you know, an air cavity in there so this, that's how this choke works, it just slides up and down and varies the positioning of the block in the core when it's fully inserted you get your maximum amperage when you pull it out, you get less and less and less as the airspace inside increases and it changes the magnetic field, the magnetic properties of the, of the core. So, I mean, that's all there is to it. They're very, very simple. People, you know, buy second-hand trans, um, stick welders and I'm sure some of them think, well, you know, maybe moving that choke up and down is going to weaken some wires, you know, the wires will be flexing. That doesn't happen. With an arc welder, a stick welder, all the wiring is fixed. There is no movement in any of the wiring on either of these sorts. The only thing that moves is the metal choke, the core, in the middle of the, of the, of the basic uh, welder core. That goes up and down. There is no electrical component attached to that. There is no electrical wiring movement. There is nothing that can actually break or wear out from movement other than, say, vibration. So basically, provided a welder hasn't been short-circuited and overheated, they will last virtually indefinitely because, as I said, there's no flexible wires in these things whatsoever. So you can safely buy one of these without worrying about, you know, well, you know, how much work's it done as far as, you know, what about movement, you know, will it be weak somewhere? No, that doesn't happen. So we're coming closer and you can see exactly how it all uh, is constructed. From this angle you can see the connection point for the mains electricity, so that's your active and your neutral, the earth point here. From that there's the, um, I mean that hooks directly into the heavy aluminium wiring for the primary coil, so you've got two primary coils at the back here. Up the front you've got the secondary coils which are totally separate 
and off of those come the work and your electrode leads. So um, basically it's uh, a four coil unit. As I said, a lot of them only have two coils, they just have the primary and secondary, but this has two. Supposedly it uh, smooths out the, uh, the 50, 50 hertz cycles and uh, gives you a, a more stable arc. In using it, I can't say as I've noticed much difference. It might be fractionally better, but uh, anyway, that's the way they've done it. All right, so here's a look on the front. Once again, you can see the choke come up. And I mean, that's what I want to lubricate because it's a bit stiff. If you lubricate them, the best thing to use is some sort of silicon lubricant like you would use for, say, your car door latches or something like that. You can use grease, but these can get warm, um, you know, through use, so the grease could run everywhere and dissipate, whereas if you use silicon um, door lube, it'll uh, stay put. So you set your, your amperage by moving the choke in or out, and then this knob here just clamps the, the choke um, firmly in that position. With the other welder I've got, the choke knob here screws up and down so you don't need a lock because the screw thread determines the position and keeps it steady. That's a better uh, setup. And some of these they have the choke screwing up and down on the top and some have it screwing in and out on the front. You just can cant the whole welder um, configuration 90 degrees to get, you know, whichever effect you want, the manufacturer wanted. So that's basically it. Simple machines. As I said, there's nothing really in them that can um, wear out, really, apart from overheating them and then to short circuit them to the degree that you burn out and melt that really heavy um, wiring would take some sort of an effort. So you'd have to really be abusing it, you know, working it well past its duty cycle or dead shorting it, you know. I mean, I have seen welders get burnt out, but not very often. So if you're going to buy one, um, you can look in through the bottom because they will be ventilated on the bottom on most of them and you can actually look up and look at the, the, the coils and see if they look black or burnt looking. Or on some like this one, there's also an inspection plate on the back, you can open it, take that off and look inside to see whether, once again, whether it's nice and brown and unmarked like this one or whether it's got some darkness to it. If it looks like it's been overheated, well just don't touch it. Well, there you have it. Cheap to buy, cheap to run, easy to use. They can be a bit brutal on light gauge stuff, but as your skills improve, well, yeah, you'll find you can tackle all sorts of stuff with the old stick welder. Certainly, I wouldn't be without mine, and, uh, yeah, get yourself one. Okay, that's it for now. See you next time. Cheers.